Well, uh, thank you again for everybody coming out. I really appreciate it. Uh, all the support that everybody's given me over the years is something that's incredibly, incredibly important to me. Um, so when I was coming up with my ideas for my senior recital, I was thinking, what could I do to make it a very, very vivarious recital? And I would say that this is something that's a very vivarious thing to do. Um, so I thought, obviously, playing bassoon has been something that's been incredibly important as far as my education here. So I wanted to represent that. And then I thought about trying to do something a little bit more music business related. And that's where the podcasting came in. Uh, as you all know, I have been obsessed with podcasts for a few years now and have started even hosting my own. And um, it's something that I don't see me ever stopping doing. In fact, I plan on making a career doing something that has podcasting in it. So my goal with this lecture for today was basically to start with the idea of how can I help other people get into podcasting, whether that's listening to it or making their own. And that's kind of where the idea of this lecture came from. So again, podcasting for beginners. The first question I always get is, what even is a podcast? Uh, a lot of people have that little app on their phone that they never use. It's a little purple one. You know, the one, you know the one I'm talking about, uh, about podcasts. So a podcast, the word podcast is a portmanteau of the words iPad, iPod and broadcast. Basically, the idea for the, I, for the podcast came about by coming up with radio show ideas and making them available to download onto your device individually. So this is different from internet radio in that it, internet radio is streamed whereas podcasts are being able to be downloaded. That, that's the big difference between the two. Uh, podcasts cover a wide variety of ideas and topics and formats and honestly, chances are if you can think of something, there's probably a podcast about it. And if there's not, well, that's kind of what the purpose of this here uh, presentation is for today. So the next question I always get is, why would I even want to do a podcast in the first place? Uh, well, the interesting thing about podcasting is that it's a growing industry. According to the Interactive Advertising Bureau, about $220 million were spent on podcast advertising in 2017, which is an increase of 85% from 2016. Even more than that, it's just a really fun way to spend time with your friends and talk about the things that you love. My, my philosophy on it is, you're gonna be doing it anyway. You're gonna be hanging out with your friends every week, just talking about the things that you normally talk about. Why not try to create a show around that idea? So let's start with the very basics of making a podcast. And that comes from, what's your idea? It can be, your idea for a podcast can be about anything. So I just wanna kinda give you a little bit, some, some tips as to what you should do and what you shouldn't do with starting your ideas for your podcast. Um, it should be something that you are passionate and knowledgeable about. Uh, because if you're not passionate about it, people are not going to want to listen to you talk about it for 30, 45 minutes to an hour even plus. If you're not knowledgeable about what you're talking about, then why should I listen to you in the first place? You obviously don't know what you're talking about, so why should I listen in the first place? Uh, my next big tip when you're first starting off making a podcast is don't be overly specific. Uh, I find that being a little bit more generic, especially for your first podcast, is the more beneficial route to go in because you can kind of get an idea, a feel for how you want a uh, podcast to run, uh, and then when you get a little bit more comfortable with the systems that are in place, how to grow an audience, you can get a little bit more specific with what you're talking about. Uh, for the rest of this presentation, we'll be using my, uh, the podcast that I host on a weekly basis, the YDN cast, which is a video gaming podcast. We'll be using that as our template going forward. So once you have your, your idea for what you want your podcast to be about, the next thing to talk about is if you want a co-host or not. So co-hosts are not exactly essential for what you're doing, 
but I find that it is a lot better for when you're starting off because it's a lot different talking to your friend about that thing that you're interested in rather than, oh, I'm going to sit here talking to myself about the same thing over and over again because that's going to end up being an echo chamber. You're going to agree with your own points, obviously. So it's nice to have somebody else to bounce off what your ideas or what they think about something that's going on in that sense. Uh, obviously, it's not always feasible to get regular co-hosts, but it's, it makes everything a little bit easier when you do. Uh, when it comes to selecting your co-hosts, it's incredibly important that they are comparable to you as far as passion and knowledge about the subject at hand. And it goes for the exact same reasons that I said that what you're, when you're coming up with your idea for your podcast, that you should be knowledgeable and passionate about what you're talking about in the first place. Because if they don't know what they're talking about, then it's going to just, there's not going to be a point to listening to it. If they're not passionate about it, their heart's not going to be into what you're talking about. It just makes a boring program. So in that case, find somebody, find one or two people that are really knowledgeable and passionate about the subject like you are. Uh, it's also helpful that if your co-hosts have different viewpoints and experiences about different topics. Uh, going back to my example of the YDN cast, each of the people that are involved in it are more or less specified and uh, experts in different genres of games that they like. So when it comes to different like new subjects that we talk about, it makes it easier to delve into, okay, well, why does this matter to what we're talking about as far as video games goes? And the same thing can be applied to different subjects as well. So uh, if you're doing, doing a podcast about cars, for example, you're going to want somebody who's probably more into, okay, well, this guy likes Ford. Like, this guy is a Ford guy, and you get somebody else who is more into foreign cars. Like, just to kind of bounce those ideas and be like, okay, well, why does this matter? Why is this one better than that one? I think that's incredibly important. And as far as numbers of co-hosts goes, I think it's really best to stick with around five at the most. Any more than that, it kind of gets uh, crowded and a little crosstalk ends up happening a little too much. It makes it a little bit harder to understand what's going on. People all want to speak their point, and so it ends up making your podcast a little bit longer. So having five at most is really, a, I would say, the ideal number. We, ha we have a, actually like six people who are regulars for the YDN cast, but we're all busy college students, so it's like most of the time we only have like four or five there anyway, so it ends up working out just fine. So this next section is going to focus on some of the things that I think most people don't think about when starting a podcast, and these are the little details that will turn your podcast from something that is just okay to a production that has the potential to grow into something huge. The first tip I have is to decide on a regular show format. Uh, by having this, it, it will basically help you getting in, it will help you get into the rhythm of what you're talking about on a regular basis. It'll boost your confidence and you'll find a rhythm better with going forward. So for the y, with the YDN cast, for example, our format is an introduction, a little bit of a housekeeping section where we talk about what's going on with the website, a uh, weekly recap of what everybody's been playing, a news segment, and then a rotating segment that is dictated by audience members and helps promote audience and community growth. I would say that my next tip is probably the most important tip when creating a podcast is to create a rundown. So a rundown is basically with the outline of what you are going to be talking about during that episode of the podcast. And this is kind of, this is going to be different depending on what your show is about and what the format of your show is about. Again, using the YDN cast as an example, primarily what I put in the rundown is, okay, so these are the news stories that we are talking about and including links to those news stories so that way they can uh, read over it and familiarize themselves with the subject so that way when we get and start recording, we don't look like a bunch of dummies. There's nothing more embarrassing than getting there and like, yeah, so we got this thing going on, uh, so-and-so. Tell me about what's going on with this. I have no idea. It just ends up kind of stopping you in your tracks right there. So it's better to go ahead and get all that information out to people so that way they can figure out what they're doing. Uh, the last little tip I have is to decide on your schedule ahead of time and stick to it. The first thing that you'll need to determine when making your podcast as far as the schedule goes, what day of the week is your show going out on? Now, the easiest way to figure out 
my tip, I guess, would be to figure out which day you're going out on. Do some research into seeing what other shows that, are, that fill the same space as your show go on. Uh, for example, again, using the YDN cast, uh, we are in the same space as other uh, podcasts such as the Giant Bomb cast, uh, the uh, Kind of Funny Games cast, and those all have specific days of the week that they come out on. So if we decide that we are going to go and put out our show on a Tuesday, the same day as the Giant Bomb cast, for example, then the audience, who is both a Giant Bomb cast listener and a YDN cast listener, has to split their time and decide, okay, well, which one am I listening to more often? If you decide that you're going to put your show out on a day that not nearly as many people put their shows out on, they're going to be more likely to be like, okay, well, Sunday is YDN cast day, therefore I'm going to listen to it when it comes out. Uh, once you establish what day of the week you're going to be putting your podcast out on, you're going to need to de determine what day of the week you're going to record. Usually what you want to do is you want to put it out, you want to probably record one to two days in advance, so that way you can have enough time to record and edit and everything else in between and figure out, okay, well, this didn't work out so well, or, oh, there was a major mishap in this part of the uh, podcast, so you got to figure out how you're going to record and fix that in, in advance. Uh, I usually like two days in advance before the podcast goes live, because that gives plenty of time to record and edit. So the next thing we'll talk about is going to vary from person to person, and that's equipment. Everybody's financial situation is different, and you'll have to make decisions based on what exactly can you afford and what's not going to hurt your wallet too much. Um, for me, when I first created the YDN cast, it made more sense to produce it as a video podcast and was eventually able to reach a point where I could do both. Uh, that sounds really counterintuitive, but I'll explain why. So with an audio-only version of a podcast, what you have to do is you have to pay for what's known as podcast hosting. And that's basically paying a monthly fee to put your audio files up on a website to give you a feed that will feed out to the major podcasting platforms that everybody knows about, like iTunes and Spotify. Uh, when I started doing the YDN cast, uh, I couldn't afford to pay a monthly fee. So I had all the equipment necessarily necessary to do an audio-only podcast, but a monthly fee was a little bit too expensive for me right out of the gate, so it made more sense to just record it as a video podcast and put it out on YouTube for free and then eventually figure out how to do the audio-only version. Uh, we'll get more in, into hosting and hosting fees later, uh, but you'll need to kind of just determine, okay, so which one is better for me at this current point in time? Uh, it can be a little daunting at first when deciding which equipment you need to pick up, but first things first, let me just say that you don't need to spend a ton of money when you're first starting off podcasting. Uh, I think people care a lot more about the content that you're putting out rather than the sound fidelity that is going out. Obviously, you want it to sound good, but it doesn't need to be like, oh, I went and recorded this in a recording studio. No, it's, it, people don't care about that. People care, oh, this person has a good point about what they're talking about. So getting it out there first and foremost is incredibly is a lot more important. So there are a few things that you'll need to create an audio-only podcast. First and foremost, we got to talk microphones. Uh, as a beginning podcaster, again, I'm not going to recommend that somebody goes out and drops hundreds of dollars on a fancy microphone. Uh, I strongly recommend that you go with the Blue Snowball Ice Condenser Mic. Uh, it comes with just a single pickup pattern, a cardioid pickup pattern, and it's sensitive enough that it'll pick up multiple people at one table with really great clarity. And in fact, this is actually what we use when we're recording the YDN cast. Uh, we just sit it right in the middle of the table, and it picks up everybody just fine. Uh, you can find it for $50 on Amazon, and it works both on Mac and Windows devices automatically. Also, you're going to find it's one of those ones that goes on sale pretty frequently. So just be on the lookout for, okay, well, maybe it'll go on sale next week, or, okay, it's a Black Friday sale. Pick it up for, like, $2. I don't know. Uh, if you're willing to spend a little extra money on your microphone, the Blue Yeti USB mic is pretty good. Uh, usually goes for about 120 bucks on Amazon, but again, often goes on sale for about 90. Uh, the great thing about this microphone is that it has multiple pickup patterns. Uh, Yeti, the Yeti has a cardioid, bi-directional, and omnidirectional pickup patterns. 
Uh, and most professional streamers actually use this microphone, and they love it just because it's so user friendly. And it it sounds just as good as anything you would else you would find somewhere else, like an XLR mic. Uh, the other thing you'll need to do for your audio podcast is you'll need to get a digital audio workstation or a DAW. A DAW is the program that you'll use in your computer to record and edit your podcast. So Pro Tools is typically the industry standard when it comes to recording and editing audio, but I, I really can't recommend that you go out and just drop hundreds of dollars on this program right out of the gate. A lot of people kind of look down upon this, but I think really Audacity is a fine alternative for what you're doing with just podcasting, especially since it's just recording and editing voice only. There's no music that goes along with it. Just go, just go with Audacity. It's completely free and it's really easy to use. So along with video, or along with all that stuff that you would need for audio podcasting, you're gonna need a few more things for video podcasting as well. First of all, you're gonna need a camera. And as silly as it sounds, the camera that we're using for the YDN cast is a webcam. It's the C16, C615 HD webcam. Um, it works really well as a webcam, but also it just, it works really well uh, screwed onto a tripod. Uh, it records in 1080p. And honestly, you're recording a static subject matter. You got people sitting at a table, you don't really necessarily need a high-end, high-fidelity camera right out of the gate. So, I mean, this, this camera goes for $30 used on Amazon, and it's a great starter camera, and eventually when you've got a little bit more money, you can invest and get something a little bit better. So, my next recommendation is kind of optional, is a nice lighting kit can take your shot to the next level. Uh, we use the Photography Photo Portrait Studio 600W Daylight Umbrella Continuous Lightning Kit by Limo Studio. Yes, try to say that five times fast. Uh, as a somewhat beginner when it comes to, light, uh, to lighting, uh, this kit is really wonderful. It's really easy, friendly, user be uh, beginner friendly, and it goes for around 50 bucks on Amazon. Uh, you'll also need a program that records all of your audio and video, and I strongly recommend uh, Open Broadcaster Software, or OBS. Uh, it's completely free. Uh, free is kind of the theme of going with this. Free and cheap, because that's the easiest way to get started in all of this. Uh, it's completely free, incredibly user-friendly, and if you ever plan on going into live streaming, that's pretty much the industry standard, because again, it's free, it's updated regularly, and it's easy to use. So this next little section is uh, kind of optional, but I felt like it'd be a good idea to kind of give you some tips on how you would go about raising funds with a podcast to be able to go from, maybe you're just going from a video only version because that's what's easier for you at that current point in time, to an audio only version. So I thought it'd be good to kind of share some ideas for how you can generate some revenue based off of your podcast. Uh, the first thing I recommend, and what we do uh, over at Your Daily Nerd, is we sell t-shirts over at uh, uh, bonfire.com, does a really great job. Uh, basically what you do there is you come up with a design, you decide which types of uh, shirts that you want to do, whether it's uh, baseball tees, t-shirts, hoodies, and you uh, based on how many you sell, you get a percentage cut. And then that way you can use that to help you fund and go from just a video only version to an audio only version. That's definitely what we did for the YDN cast. Um, Patreon is another option if you're a little bit more established. Patreon, if you've never heard of it, is a form of crowdfunding. Uh, basically what it is, is it's, pay it's crowdfunding that's based more around content creators. Uh, you'll see a lot of people who do cosplay and um, podcasts have their own Patreon where they basically they pledge a certain dollar amount each month to be able to back you and you get get their money obviously uh, and then you basically say all right because you're backing me you get this exclusive thing in return like sometimes you get bonus episodes of your podcast sometimes you'll get a uh, private Q and A session with that um, with that streamer that you like um, live streams happen. Um, other things like that. I, I think Patreon is a little bit better for people who are a little bit more established, and so this is something to kind of keep in mind as a, an option for funding later down the road once you've kind of built a little bit more of an audience. 
so now that we've talked about podcasting equipment and a little bit of funding, let's talk about podcast hosting. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, hosting is essentially uploading your content to a site like iTunes and Spotify. Uh, it, uploading your content to a site that distributes it to multiple platforms like iTunes and Spotify. Uh, there are many options that you can choose from, and they all have their advantages and disadvantages. Uh, most podcast hosting sites require a monthly fee, and a good majority of them offer you analytic data so you can figure out, okay, who is exact, who is my audience, who is listening to my podcast. Um, I've included a few examples of some podcast hosting sites. Um, SoundCloud is incredibly, incredibly popular. Uh, has a fairly friendly user interface. However, you have to jump through a few hoops to get it onto the different platforms, and their monthly fee of $16 is a little steep. Uh, Podbean has the advantage of being completely free. However, their uh, file size um, their file size uh, restrictions make it hard if you are doing a podcast that's longer than maybe an hour and a half, uh, which the YDN cast ends up being most of the time two to three hours. So that's not really a viable option for us. Uh, for the YDN cast, we actually use uh, Simplecast. Um, it has all has all the benefits of those other two sites, and uh, it has a lower monthly uh, fee of twelve dollars a month, and I. It's really easy. Heck, we put out a new episode of the podcast in like two minutes earlier today. Um, ultimately, you're going to have to do some research and figure out which one be works best for you, your podcast, and most importantly, your wallet. Uh, next, we'll talk about setting up the actual podcast on the hosting site. Now, you can read. There's a lot of different little things up there. Uh, but I'll probably some, hit some of the highlights for you. Um, the description is probably is probably one of the more important parts because um, with the description, you want it to be not a novel, but you want it to be beefy enough that you actually have what exactly is your what, what's your podcast about, but you don't want it to be like over explaining every little thing that's going on on the podcast. Uh, the other really important thing to point out here is uh, keywords. Keywords are basically your hashtags for your podcast. What do you have that's associated with your podcast? So when you, they go on to iTunes, for example, okay, if I search if I search Xbox, is the YDN cast going to show up on there? No? That's a problem. You need to make sure that that's one of the things that you have on there. Um, that, that's pretty much, those are the, pretty much the two main talking points to talk about with setting up. Everything else is pretty self-explanatory, title, and whether or not your show is explicit or not. So next we'll talk about actually getting on the podcasting platforms. Uh, this is like the last big step. So using Simplecast as our example, there's a sharing tab over on the left-hand side, and it shows you where the RSS feed URL is. That's going to basically be your key that you submit to all these other different websites yeah, that will be like, okay, this is what we're using to feed out to people who are listening to this. Um, it's very self-explanatory. Simplecast gives you like step-by-step -step instructions on what you, what exactly it is you need to do to get that podcast on those different sites. Um, with iTunes, what you'll need to do is you just head over to Apple's Podcast Connect. You log in with your iTunes info, and it'll ask you basically, all right, what's your RSS feed URL? Just copy and paste. Everything from Simplecast will autofill all the information in that you need. And then you just hit submit. 48 hours later, should be good to go, unless there's something wrong. And then they'll email you and notify, hey, you don't have artwork for your podcast. You need to change that. Uh, Google Play is literally the same, except you go to the Google Play Music Podcast Portal. Again, same, same process. Put the URL in, and um, 48 hours later, should be good to go. And Stitcher, I guess you can kind of figure out what I'm about to say here. It's, 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 pretty, it's pretty easy to get onto these sites. It's the po figure out, figuring out the podcast hosting itself that is the hard part. Once you get that down, the next step, getting onto the actual iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, Spotify, is easy. So in conclusion, uh, you should have your very own podcast 
on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, Spotify, YouTube, whatever is the easiest way for you. Um, I hope you learned something during this presentation. Uh, like I said before, podcasts are supposed to be fun and about topics you enjoy. So enjoy and have fun while you're doing it because if you're having a fun time, your audience is gonna have a fun time. Um, if anybody has any specific questions about podcasting, uh, come up and talk to me afterwards. I'd be more than happy to clarify on anything if I wasn't specific enough or um, if you have some, I guess, more detailed questions on a case-by-case -case basis. But uh, yeah, thank you very much for coming and I appreciate all y'all being here. Thank you.